These are for unusual kitchen utensils that I intend to test out to see if they actually work. Now a lot of the tests I'm doing today for these are based on manufacturer claims and I'm also incorporating what people in the comments on Amazon said they use them for. So let's see how these really work in today's video. This decorative looking fork is actually the Forgetti, which is supposed to help you eat spaghetti more easily. Let's see how that works. All right, this is the Forgetti spaghetti fork. I paid $17.14 for four of these, and it is simply a tool designed to make eating spaghetti a little bit easier. That should be easy to test out. You can see from the design here, it's, it's made to grab onto the spaghetti so it doesn't slide off like a traditional fork. Uh, I'd be interested to try that one out. All right, I'm gonna try some spaghetti with and without sauce and with a regular fork and with a spaghetti and see how they compare. First up, no sauce. I've got this plate of spaghetti here. I got some olive oil in there to hopefully make it kind of slick so it doesn't all stick together. Let me first try a regular fork and just see how that goes. Now most people don't have too much of a problem putting spaghetti on their fork, but it does, it does slip right off sometimes, just like that. No matter which way you hold it, it you know, it's, there are people that struggle with it, I, I think. When you try to do a regular fork, you do get a lot of this. It, it can be a bit cumbersome. Of course, people have been doing that for, for centuries without too much of a problem, but let's see if the forgetty can do any better. Now, it, it does seem like it kind of still falls off when you point it downward, but their packaging shows it pointing upward, which these nubs right here, are more geared for holding it facing up than facing down. I'll just do a small amount. Facing up, not bad. Facing down, not as good. Let's go back to regular fork once again, let's see. Facing up, not bad really. Facing down, <laughs> even better in that case. I guess your individual wrapping technique could also affect how well this works. Now their packaging has this cute little character that definitely shows it, the fork pointing upward. I mean, I guess, I guess. We got a big fork full of spaghetti. Okay, it definitely holds it up this way. Not that way at all. Another regular fork. I'm gonna keep trying this. Nice big amount here, pointing up. And it still works. Pointing down, doesn't work either. All right, let's try it with sauce, and this time, I'm gonna eat it. I've got some beautiful generic sauce on the, here. Let's see what we got. With a fork, we are twirling. The twirl spaghetti stayed in the fork this time. I'm not really having much of a problem with a regular fork, to be honest. All right, so I ate about a third of the spaghetti with the regular fork and had absolutely no problems whatsoever, but let me try the spaghetti. Maybe there's a difference. What's funny is that when I was just trying out with the sauce, just kind of testing it out, I would give a slight advantage to the forgetty, but when I'm actually eating it, I didn't really notice much difference. Something else that occurred to me is that not everybody twirls their spaghetti. Some people eat it differently than that. So this particular utensil is gonna have a very narrow audience. You know, I know people online do like this one, but to me, 17 bucks for four of these for maybe marginal results, I'm not so sure about that. I guess there's people out there that struggle with the spaghetti that might want to buy something like this. It seems too situational and too much of a marginal benefit for me, but your mileage rate may vary, but in my case, my mileage isn't really that great. Next up is this six tine blending fork. Let's see how that does. This is a two pack of a blending fork. I paid $23.95 for two of these, made of stainless steel, dishwasher safe. It looks a lot like the old Foley forks that were popular back in, the, back in the day. Julia Chow was all about those. It's good for blending, mixing, whisking, and serving. All right, since it is a blending fork, let's see how it actually blends something. In this case, whisking. Got a couple of eggs here, let's see what happens. All right, it is very whisk-like, I would say. Okay, so I would say, sir, as far as a whisk, it certainly would function in that capacity. When I think of the old school Foley forks, which this is very similar to, I think of when Julia Child used to use it back in the day. And if I recall properly, I could be mistaken, but I can't remember her using it for something like this to cut butter with flour. So let's see if it works well for that. I think it will, but we shall see. Oh, it definitely, it's, I can feel that it's much better than using just a regular fork like some people do. 
I was worried that this was going to be cheap because it came from Amazon, but so far it seems like it's holding up, so that's good. I would say it's working better than I thought it was going to in this capacity. I wasn't really sure what to expect. Now there are utensils that do this specific job, but the blending fork has other uses. So in that capacity, this one might be better for some people. Considering my butter was a little bit on the cold side going into it, I think that it, it did a fine job with it. What I like about this one is it has other uses. So you're not just, it's not just a one use item. Speaking of other uses, let's go do something else. Check this out. I can actually put this entire block of ground beef right in there with the blending fork. It's definitely better than a, uh, than a regular fork. I will say that. I probably should have used my larger always pan for this, but that one I just used for something else. Now I'm being careful not to use the sharp end of this on the surface. I'm just pushing more with the, the smooth edges because I don't really want to scratch this pan. I've already scratched it once. That's why this is a replacement. But if I just press with the bottom, it's not affecting the, the surface. You don't want to do too much, uh, too much of this kind of stuff or that on the side, but this, this doesn't seem like it's affecting the, the pan at all. All right, so this ground beef's looking pretty good. I just pressed downward mostly. I tried not to do that to scratch the nonstick surface, but it certainly worked. The ground beef is nicely broken up, so I have to give the blending fork credit for doing what it's supposed to do. All right, so the ground beef turned out fine. I also tried the blending fork for serving spaghetti, and it was able to grab not only longer spaghetti, but shorter ones as well. I can see a lot of people having a use for this around the kitchen. This is one of the more unusual ones. This is a jumbo fisky, which is supposed to be a fork and whisk. Let's check it out. Right here is the jumbo fisky, a fork and whisk. I paid a 36 from this on Amazon. Uh, the features that it combines a fork and a whisk allow you to whisk, stir, scoop, and strain. Heat resistant up to 464 degrees Fahrenheit. Ideal for nonstick cookware, transferring food to a plate or bowl. This is by Norpro. They say it's the ultimate fork and whisk combo. That is, that is interesting looking. The isk part of the fisky stands for whisk. Let's try it out. Got a couple of eggs here, let's see. I mean, it, it certainly functions as a whisk. I, no no uh, complaints there. All right, it can definitely whisk. The fisky can whisk. All right, the fisky supposedly allows you to be able to scoop and serve. Let's see what can scoop and serve. Oh yeah. I, I guess you can't say you have a, many whisks that can do this. That is unusual for something that it serves as a whisk, but yeah, it works. It really is kind of more like a spoon too. It's kind of spoon fork whisk. I would say it definitely can scoop with the best of them. One of the things the Fisky is supposed to be good for is pancake mix. Let's try it out. I can feel that it's good at folding this, this mix right here. It seems to aerate and fold quite nicely. This is, I like it. All right, these definitely look very fluffy. I think that the, the Fisky is so far on a roll. I can't say I had high expectations or low expectations for the Fisky, but I'm actually kind of happy with the way it's working out. All right, so the Fisky is supposed to be good for folding. Now I got a little bit of hint of that when I was doing the pancake mix. Let's do some actual folding and see how it goes. I've got some heavy whipping cream right here. I'm gonna whip that up and then I'm gonna add some lemon curd to it and fold that in there. Now normally you would need two utensils for that, a balloon whisk for the whipping, and a spatula for the folding, but I'm gonna do both with the Fisky. Let's try it out. First up, let's whisk. All right, I think we're getting our, our whipped cream now. There we go. I was able to whip some cream with the Fisky. Now let's try to fold it with some lemon. You can kind of use the side of this in the way you'd use a spatula, so that's good. All right, so the, the Fisky not only whisked, but it also folded, so good job, Fisky. This unusual looking one is the five-in-one uni tool. All right, here's the Joseph Joseph uni tool. It's, it's much bigger than I thought it was gonna be, and the pictures have looked a lot smaller than this. It's very, very large. It is a five-in-one utensil. It, it features a slotted spoon right here. It can be used as a turner. There's even a cutting tool on the edge here. It's kind of a serrated knife, I guess. It can be used as a solid spoon over here and a spatula. Space-saving design, ideal for use with nonstick cookware. Heat resistant up to 392 degrees Fahrenheit. Over here they show it being used in all five different ways. Slotted spoon, turner, solid spoon, cutting edge, and spatula. To give all those a shot. All right, let's see how it does as a turner right here. We've got this chicken breast. Can you use it to turn items? Apparently you can. 
It will turn a chicken breast. It does work. All right, good. Now let's try the cutting side of this here. There is a serrated edge here. Can I actually use this as a knife? Oh wow, it actually does cut. A pretty, a pretty clean cut. Maybe not the cleanest cut ever, but I mean, it kind of worked. I was the most skeptical of that cutting edge over everything else, but it actually worked. Let's try another piece. Scoop that out with, onto a plate here. That is the serrated edge. That just looks strange cutting with that, doesn't it? Very strange. I mean, it's certainly not a replacement for a knife. It's, it's definitely no knife, but it does cut. That was, that was a bit of an ugly cut as well. I wonder if it's better than just a regular butter knife. Let me see. I would say it's probably one step below uh, a knife like this. So while it does work, maybe it's okay in a pinch, but I really wouldn't count on it to replace a knife. Let's see how well this works as a scoop. Uh, not too bad, really. Let's see. The only thing I'm going to say is that when I'm holding it, the handle isn't particularly comfortable. This isn't the most comfortable handle I've ever held, but it certainly functions. It does hold you know, a decent amount. It does scoop. It does scoop and it does, it does scrape too. You could use this as a scraper down here. That's one tool that works. What else we got here? The packaging for the unit tool shows them putting frosting on some sort of a flat cake. So the closest I could find was, was this. So let's see if it actually works. One thing I can say, when you're holding it like this, you actually have the sharp end where the knife is at right there. That doesn't feel very comfortable. I, I can't say I like that very much. I'll try to hold it a little further up here. Oh, it does work. It does, it surprisingly works. I wasn't sure if that was going to work, but, but it did. I wouldn't say that was a very challenging, but at least it did it. The packaging shows it as a slotted spoon for some peas. Let's see what we got. Oh, look at this. It, it does work as a slotted spoon, but it, it's so long, it's hard to get in there. It's long and shallow, which they just kind of all float off to the side. I'm not sure it's the best slotted spoon I ever had. In a pinch, yes, it would work. One more time. That's how many peas we got with this one. Let's try a real slotted spoon. Yeah, it works, just not as good. They do show as a regular spoon. It looks like about a tablespoon's worth. Let's see. This is a tablespoon right here. Oh, yeah, about, about one tablespoon, and that's about it. Just out of curiosity, I wonder if you can use this as an actual spoon to eat with. Let's see. Here we go. Down the hatch. Hmm. I mean, it's a pretty wide spoon as far as eating goes, but I guess if you're in a pinch, it would definitely work. I guess. Let's take a look at some pros and cons of all these. First up, the forgetty. I would say the pro is that it does grab spaghetti a little bit better than a regular fork, but the con would be it doesn't do a much better job than a regular fork. The other thing is that this is a very specific use and not even everybody even twirls their spaghetti, so it's a very small audience. I guess there are some people that might like this, but I think a lot of people wouldn't have a need for it. Let's talk about the pros and cons of the Jumbo Fisky. It's good for mixing, aerating, folding, even scooping some items. It's also a lot easier to clean than a regular whisk. There aren't really a lot of cons in this one. I would say the only con I can think of is this is kind of large. Of course, I bought the Jumbo version. I'm probably going to get the small one so I can have a set of these. For the blending fork, I would say that does the work of a lot of different utensils and in some cases does better than the originals. The main con of this one is that this is kind of a cheap Amazon version. It held up pretty well in my test, but I worry about it long term. I really wish a major manufacturer would get in and do a good version of this because I think it's a great idea. Now, as far as the Uni tool goes, I think the pros is that it has a lot of uses and it does do all those uses. The major con would be that not all those uses are very good. I would say the knife is probably the weakest one. You could probably use a regular butter knife and get better results. The spoon is pretty small. The slotted spoon nearly isn't that big either. It's good for scooping, it's good for turning. If you have a fully stocked kitchen, I don't know if this is gonna really have a place, but if you're cramped for space like in an RV, this might actually be a pretty good tool. Well, that's it. If you've used any of these utensils, tell me what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.